of outcomes, and then find the cardinality of events associated with A and V, A and B. All right? So first, uh, think of what we have here. You got this box, and it's got these tickets numbered 1 through 10. One, two, three, and so on. Nine, there's the ten. And um, we're going to draw two. Now, notice here, let's go back to our example here. It says here, the first ticket is not replaced before the second draw, okay? So we're going to draw two without replacement. Okay. So let's see here. Um, so the size of the sample space, and let's think about that for a minute, um, the size of the sample space would be the number of ways to make the first draw, and then by the multiplication principle, we would multiply that by the number of ways to make the second draw. Let's see, there's 10 tickets in the box. So the number of ways we can make the first draw, well, that'd be 10, the digits 1 through 10. Now, we've drawn one out, and we're not replacing it. How many tickets are left in the box? Well, that'd be 9, right? So it looks like the size of the sample space, then, I'll rewrite it down here for emphasis, would be 90 possible outcomes. Now, we don't have to write all those out, but don't worry about that. Now, let's see if we can find the, um, uh, the size of the event spaces associated with events A and B. Now, let's just review here. We said that uh, A represents the event that a 3 is drawn. All right. So let's see if we can go ahead and, and write out that event. All right. So A represents the event a 3 is drawn. Let's see, how can that happen? Um, we could draw a, a 1 on the first draw and a 3 on the second draw. We could draw a 2 on the first draw, 3 on the second draw. Um, we could draw a 4 on the first draw, a 3 on the second draw, and so on. All the way down to we could draw a 10 on the first draw and a 3 on the second draw. Agreed? So all those all those outcomes represent drawing a 3 on the second draw. But you can also draw a 3 on the first draw as well, right? We could draw a 3 and then a 1. Or a 3 and then a 2. We can't draw a 3 and a 3 because, remember, we're not replacing the first um, ticket before the second one is drawn. So we could draw a 3 and then a 4. And then a 3 and a 5. And so on. Up to the last one, a 3 and a 10. So there's the event space associated with um, event A. Now let's see, how many do we have here? 1, 2, and remember we're skipping the 3 and the 3. So there's what, 9 of them up here, right? 9, nine outcomes up here at the top. And then down below here, same thing, we have nine of them down here. So it looks like the size of the event space then is going to be 18. Just for emphasis, I'll write 18 ways to draw a three. All right. Now, let's take a look at... Now, now you know what? Let's go ahead before we, before we go any further. Let's go ahead and find the probability associated with that then. So the probability of A is the number of ways that A can occur, that's the size of uh, event space A, divided by the total number of possibilities. In other words, the size of the sample space. We said at the beginning the size of the sample space was 90, and 18 is the size of the event space. Now let's see here. I wonder what that's going to be. We, I, guess, I guess we could go ahead and work that out. We could take um, 18 and then divide that by 90. And if we do that, what do we get? 
uh, 0.2, all right? So that's perfectly acceptable if we want to write 0.2 as our answer. Now, if we, if we want to convert that back to a fraction, notice here, if I hit the math key and then hit the enter key and then hit it one more time, notice I can convert that decimal into a fraction. But that's, so that's okay. We can either write one-fifth for our answer, a proper fraction is just fine, or 0.2 for our answer, if you'd like to write it in decimal form. It really doesn't matter. They say the same thing. Now, let's take a look at uh, event B now. It says B represents the event that the numbers add up to 5 on these two draws. So let's think about how we're going to do that now. Here, B represents the event, the sum of the draws is 5. All right, let's go ahead and write the outcomes associated with that. If we drew a 1, we'd have to draw a 4. Agreed? And then, um, if we drew a 2, we could draw a 3. If we drew a, um, a 3, we could draw a 2. If we drew a 4, we could draw a 1. And that's the only ways we could draw two of these tickets out and have the sum be 5. Those, that's the only way we can do it. All right, a 1 and a 4, a 2 and a 3, a 3 and a 2, a 4 and a 1. So the size of that event space looks like it's going to be 4. So this means the probability of B, that's the size of the cardinality of event space B, divided by the size of the sample space. That's, what, 4 over 90? All right. So let's go ahead and compute that now. 4 ninetieths. We get, what, 0.4 repeat, uh, oh, excuse me, 0 0.04 repeating. So that's, what, a little bit more than 4%. And again, if we hit the math key and the enter key twice, we can convert that back to a, uh, a fraction. So we can rewrite that then as either 2 45ths or uh, 0 0.04, if you'd like to kind of round it off like that. Or we could write it as 4.44%. So notice here, what we've written right here are really, oh, excuse me, are the three ways that we can express a probability. One, we can write a probability as a uh, proper fraction. That's what you see with 2 45ths. And then as a decimal, 0 0.04 or as a percent, 4.44%. All those ways are ways we can write the, um, the probability Okay, um, uh, let's, then let's just kind of follow up with that in slide number eight uh, with a few notes. When computing classical probability, remember we always have to assume that the events are equally likely to occur. And there's lots of, there's lots of, um, there's lots of situations where that's really the truth. Uh, so this means that every element in the sample space has an equal chance of being selected. And like we said at, at the end of that example, probabilities can be um, expressed as proper fractions, as decimals or percents. And combinations can be used to compute classical probabilities. It ends up that that's a uh, kind of a common counting, counting technique we can use. So let's take a look at one of those right now in um, slide uh, number, in example three, slide number nine. 